Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at testing the NVMe SSD cache drives from Synology. Today's part, uh, part in this series is about Passmark where we're going to be using Passmark to run uh, disk benchmarks on a RAID 5 array on a Synology NAS and this RAID 5 array is going to be using WD Ultrastar 10TB drives in a RAID 5 and we've got a separate Ultrastar 10TB RAID 5 running on exactly the same system, but taking advantage of SSD caching. It's the same two RAID 5 arrays that we've used previously for the likes of AJA, um, for Eto Disk Benchmark, for Blackmagic, and for Windows Upload Download, all of which over 10 GBE. Now, this system that we're utilizing today, I am using screen recording software, as you see there, so it is causing the odd bit of lag there on the web browser. That is to be expected. I'm connected via 10 GBE to this system and this 10 GBE connection uh, I've got two mapped drives to these two RAID 5 environments that are utilizing hard drives so again those are the ultra star drives uh, I'll just let the control panel there uh, carry on in the background and this is to show the network access there that is taking advantage of that 10 GBE connection on the NVMe and 10 GBE combo card. Now, if you do check out part one of this series, you'll know that the reason we're doing voiceover is because of the noise this NAS makes. It's a rack mount enterprise level data center class device. But as you see, we're running via the 10 GBE connection on the NAS with uh, 9000 MTU and a 10 GBE connection using a Thunderbolt 10 G adapter on my local PC here. And if we open it up, we can have a little look at the jumbo frames or jumbo packet and that will show us that we are running 9,000 each way. So we've opened it up as much as we can for today's testing. And from there, what we're gonna be doing is running disk benchmark in the background, and that will allow us with these two mapped network drives that you're about to see on screen to run standard performance disk testing that will give us a nice consistent read of the read and write speeds across both of them. Now, it's worth highlighting while we're doing this that once again, that screen recording software really did make things a little bit difficult with regards to this Passmark test. Passmark is quite a GPU hungry bit of software and that becomes very, very apparent um, in the early stages of this video. So I do apologize for the slight lag and delay there on screen. So we've got the disk benchmark up. The first thing we have to do is head into the preferences because generally, as you see there, it was testing um, a different folder. You have to make sure that the, test your, the drive you're testing is the right one. By default, it will test your internal. But as you see, I've set it to the A mapped network drive, the non-cache, and we're adjusting the test duration. I thought about doing a long or a short one and then realized it would just go on for too long for you guys given this array, so I've switched it to a medium. And we're going to be running that test there in the background. We're going to click OK. Naturally, I selected three test iterations just to make sure we got a good average there. And what we did after that, we didn't run a whole system benchmark, just the disk benchmark. So from here, we went into the tests, and this will allow us to run this full range of read and write testing arrays. It does show other disks that have been tested in this um, release of, of Passmark. We're gonna go ahead and run though all of those tests of sequential read, write, and general access. And both of them should now be running on screen. And this will show us both of them testing. So let's fast forward to the completion of both of these tests. So we've got the results now of the read speed available to us on screen, just jiggling it about there so we get it correctly on screen side by side. Now, um, the no cache side of things, that averaged out at 459 megabytes per second over the full course of the test, but the cache supported one did seemingly go a little higher at 490 megabytes per second average overall. Now there was a good start on the SSD caching side and a slow start there on the non-cache side, if you look at them side by side. And there were spikes in between them, with the highest spike being around 575 megabytes per second, about 30-odd seconds in, on the non-cache RAID 5. 
and even the Cash Raid 5 was quite similar with the top of them being at again 7, uh, 575. Now, a lot of that is just to do with those hard drives and the RAID array they were in. Now, if we carry on and load at the write speed, we're able to see that the write speed was a little bit different. The write speed was significantly higher, which really surprised me. The write speed of the no cache RAID 5 array came in at around 626 megabytes per second on average, with a spike quite high up early on, but still not going absolutely crazy. But we definitely saw um, a lower average with the SSDs with cache. Um, at 607, uh, 17 megabytes per second average, but there were more dips, but with an overall increased total at 860 megabytes per second, those SSDs that were acting as caching allowed us to exceed the RAID 5 speed we expected to see from those four drives in a RAID 5 environment. And although there are lots more dips um, in the caching side of things in terms of write, and far less so in terms of read, it should be said that the pass mark score did seemingly seem to be higher overall with the cache. And a lot of that is to do with extensive file testing. Uh, pass mark has a system uh, that runs across sequential and random read writes that it runs between them. And uh, it's the um, random that we see a lot more increased performance between these two. Uh, definitely a disparity between them, certainly. Now, what this means in the grand scheme of things, well, a lot of this is you would use uh, disk, um, you would use Passmark to assess a general storage array. It's not like when we were running Atto when that was looking at um, the block sizes across different file sizes and AJA and Blackmagic were more about file editing. Uh, the Passmark testing we're running is more of an indicator of general storage. And if you can have lots of different users accessing a shared drive, the pass mark performance is probably the one that's going to be the greatest guidance to you. And although the difference between them in terms of overall performance um, aren't enormous, particularly in terms uh, of the additional cost of caching, utilizing those SMV 3400s in conjunction with the uh, combo card, I'd still say overall that the um, both of them uh, displayed sporadic read writes, um, but there was just a more consistency of read overall with the hard drive array with SSD caching on board. And consistency is kind of key overall when it comes to SSD caching. Because sometimes it's about the smaller and larger file types meeting somewhere in the middle. Caching is greatly beneficial to smaller file types. Uh, with larger files not really seeing the benefit of caching. And I think these tests have indicated that somewhat. But... I'm going to wrap things up here. And again, do check out the video with regards to virtualization. We are using uh, two VMs. Once again, a VM on each of these different RAID arrays. One with cache, one without. And I'll be on the next video. So do check those out. And otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next time. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more. And stay tuned for the VM test utilizing the new SSDs from Synology. I'll see you next time.